Thank you very much, Peter, for the kind introduction, and it's a great pleasure um, to address um, the uh, Living Lab Summit. Um, I'd like to share with you and um, the participants today um, just a few insights about NEOM and the vision that we have for becoming um, a global living lab for the future of mobility. NEOM is really a, a very unique project, um, a greenfield development in the northwestern uh, corner of Saudi Arabia. The um, overall size of NEOM is actually 26,000 square kilometers, um, approximately the size of Belgium. Um, and over the last um, a couple of years, um, we have developed um, a, a very iconic um, new regional plan and urban development plan of how we want to develop this new um, uh, land of the future. And of course, with regard to um, the interrelationship between cities and mobility, cities shape mobility and mobility shape cities, and is how we bring together land use, urban design, and sustainable technology is really um, how we will um, create the mobility system of the future. And of course, NEOM has developed a very iconic land use plan. We're planning to build a linear city that cuts to um, the, um, the area that um, uh, uh, NEOM occupies. And you can see on the map behind me, um, it sits um, uh, between the Red Sea, the Gulf of Aqaba, um, uh, and, and features both very high mountain ranges and incredible desert landscape. The vision that we have is to build the line um, and a linear city that um, um, extends from the coast through our mountains into our desert plains. And that will um, allow us to develop a very unique approach to, to urban design and, and mobility. Um, and of course, it is that combination um, of um, these different um, elements that determines um, the mobility system. And our mobility vision is really underpinned um, by a vision and the number of principles. We want to be truly sustainable, um, implement shared mobility, lead in innovation and autonomy, um, but also integrate intelligent land use, urban design and technology. And the four principles that we seek to implement is a fully zero emissions um, mobility system, um, building on a 100% renewable energy system that we're building out based on sun and wind, and we have the ideal conditions for it. Um, we want to focus on um, core public transit systems and shared mobility, um, really overcoming the private car um, that has caused so many problems in the cities in the 20th century. We want to be able to offer on demand, just in time, and um, enabled by autonomous services um, uh, mobility. And, and also, we have a very strong focus that in our cities and our neighborhoods, we really want to um, emphasize active mobility and micro mobility um, as a contribution to livable cities. And um, in doing so, and in building out our infrastructure, and in designing um, our overarching urban um, system and mobility system, we also want to be a global living lab. We want to work with partners from around the world, bring together best practice from around the world um, in bringing together a multimodal, fully integrated, um, uh, sustainable mobility system. Um, just to perhaps um, to um, give you a bit of background, this shows you where NEOM sits in the world. And of course, the line is also symbolic. If you see the line on the screen here, it really um, is a line that will show where the economic center, uh, as the center of economic gravity of the world will develop in the next decades. Um, and of course, NEOM sits quite strategically um, between a number of key continents and in the middle um, of these um, and has access um, to all of them. Um, similarly, when we look at um, uh, the sea mobility, and NEOM is situated right at, um, uh, next to one of the most important shipping corridors of the world um, through the Suez Canal, um, uh, about 25% of global uh, uh, shipping flows uh, uh, and freight flows come through here. And one of the key um, objectives for NEOM is, is to develop one of the most advanced ports um, that will be fully automated and that will serve essentially as the key logistics hub to supplying, supplying NEOM. It also enables um, uh, uh, the access of potentially building a land bridge over um, to um, uh, across the Arabian Peninsula and thereby cutting short um, the journeys of ships that will otherwise have to go 
all the way around, um, and, um, and that's part of uh, NEOM's sea mobility strategy. In terms of land mobility, of course, we were also um, sitting really at the hub of some of the most important population centers. Um, and a key vision in the long term for NEOM is to bring together the continents of China, the Middle East, and North Africa, and Southern Europe, um, and to provide new connections and new um, uh, relationships and trade flows um, between these. Now, in designing our mobility system, um, we really looked at how we can tailor that for each scale. Um, each of the, the regional, the, the urban and the neighborhood scale require their own specific mobility solutions that we have to bring together and integrate into a, uh, a fully um, multimodal system. And our mobility system is essentially deeply anchored and has evolved, co-evolved with our land use regional plan. You can see here the, the Neom territory and where our linear city, the line, will be built, symbolically extending that line that I showed earlier, um, and, um, and also um, uh, a number of other developments, smaller, low-density developments that we are um, uh, implementing um, around Neom and mountain resorts, resorts along our coast, um, but also our port in the south and a new international airport in the east, as well as um, uh, an archipelago of islands um, that are really sitting in one of the most untouched coral seas. Um, Neom has an incredible range of terrains and, and ecosystems. And one of the key ambitions that we had when we developed this regional plan was to think about how we can organize urbanization in the 21st century um, um, with as little footprint on the land, um, with an ability for our urban system to grow for future population growth. And that's really what the line represents. Um, now, in terms of the mobility system um, to then service this um, uh, regional plan and land use plan, we have a number of key features. Um, one of them is, of course, to um, uh, have access to an international airport, as well as an international seaport, um, as well as then providing core backbone public and freight transit systems that can really take the heavy lifting in terms of moving people and goods. Um, secondly, at the regional level, we want to innovate around um, EV trails, around air mobility, electric air mobility, that allows us to connect our core urban development area to our outlying settlements, low density settlements, and really unlock a very unique use case for um, uh, electric air mobility, which is that we can reinvent mobility without infrastructure, without ground infrastructure. Um, and because we want to protect 95% of NEOM um, and leave it undeveloped because of its really incredible natural beauty, um, we also want wanted to find ways to provide transport connectivity without having to build roads everywhere and um, with all the um, negative uh, environmental externalities of, of road-based transport. Um, and so our aim is really to innovate and to be leading in integrating electric air mobility into our multimodal transport system. And lastly, at the regional level, we also want to innovate around implementing um, emission-free coastal shipping, looking at both things such as electric autonomous container barges, but also, of course, all kinds of passenger vessels, be they battery electric um, or fuel cell driven or alternative fuel driven, um, to be able to connect through this wonderful um, marine um, environment that we have in our islands. Um, if we then look at the modes that we're developing, we're focusing very much in high, ultra high speed passenger transit, um, looking both at the latest generation of um, uh, high speed rail, but also exploring the potential to future development of Hyperloop. We're looking at the latest generation of electric freight rail and autonomous freight rail to provide the heavy lifting for our logistics services and very much um, the EV tolls and the um, uh, coastal modes that um, I had just described. Now, of course, um, in order to unlock this seamless multimodal system um, that allows you to switch between these modes, we also need to build out the right mobility hubs that connect um, across these different modes and allow people um, uh, uh, easy switching from one mode to the next. Now, at the urban level, the, you can really um, uh, show how the, the line as an urban design unlocks an incredible opportunity to rethink the city without the car. This is a bird's eye section of the line, and you can see the line is relatively narrow. At the heart of it, we have an integrated transport and infrastructure and utility backbone. 
um, which we call the spine, as the human body has a spine. Um, and that means that um, given the dimensions of the line, you can then develop um, urban neighborhoods represented by the circles here, which really have that perfect dimension um, in terms of density and accessibility to a core public transit um, system, and then allows you to rethink the city and those neighborhoods um, in terms of not actually requiring cars because you have such short distances to your central transport system. And that then allows us to both focus um, on, on some shared electric and autonomous mobility to complement that local um, delivery, but also to look at autonomous um, electric freight um, first last mile distribution um, within that urban system. And at the neighborhood level, what we're looking at is really um, um, unlocking a, a very high mode share perhaps 70, 80% of active mobility, walking and cycling um, to uh, um, free up the city um, from all these cars um, and, the, um, and, and create livable spaces for people to, to, to enjoy, um, but also to innovate around how we can solve for the, the other big issue that we have at the moment in the world in terms of um, uh, uh, delivery, goods delivery, um, by innovating around potential modes. And so really in summary, we're looking at um, integrating a whole range of modes, each of them um, serving their purpose at the right level, um, the regional, the urban and the neighborhood, um, each solving um, for creating the most livable city and at the same time, the most efficient on demand um, uh, mobility system um, that we can create. Um, and, and this is really the heart of the integrated mobility system that we're planning. Now, of course, apart from the vehicular solutions, this requires um, a number of um, enablers. Um, you need to have the right services, architecture. How do we um, um, provide and provide for the just-in-time um, disposition of fleets um, to reach our users? Um, we need to um, obviously look at the energy system integration. We need to look at um, the required ICT infrastructure. And of course, we need to look at um, um, the right governance and regulatory um, system to allow for that um, a shared mobility um, uh, 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 system. Now, with services, we think autonomy is a great enabler. It can help solve problems. Um, of course, autonomy on its own is not um, an objective even if we turn every car in the world uh, autonomous today, we wouldn't have solved a single problem. So we need to understand where can autonomy actually help solve a problem. And in particular, with shared mobility, there's an opportunity to look at um, the demand-driven real-time disposition of fleets um, that then enables shared and on-demand mobility. But of course, we also need to be able to connect the user to the vehicle and to the infrastructure in um, a seamless way to enable that. Um, and that is true not just for passengers, but also for our logistic flows, where we want to have a just-in-time and fully automated um, logistics infrastructure. Now, for energy, we, we have uh, the incredible situation in Neon where we have the perfect balance of sun and wind so that we can create a 100% renewable energy system and actually also um, look at desalinating um, water as a big problem with um, green power and then actually also unlocking um, a green hydrogen ecosystem um, that, could, that is important for industrial applications and for some heavy um, uh, uh, mobility needs. So we're looking at both BEV and fuel cell. Of course, we need to then build out the requisite charging infrastructure, inductive conductive and perhaps um, in, in motion. And we need to look at um, really the distributed integration of our electric vehicles into our smart grid. Um, and equally, and this is the benefit that we have across all of this being a greenfield, we can really look at customizing our infrastructure to enable a ubiquitous data collection um, uh, that then can underpin these services, have an integrated systems architecture, um, as well as then developing the requisite platforms that we need um, to manage and connect um, the passenger mobility logistics, but also city services. Um, and um, lastly, of course, we have an incredible opportunity to, to innovate and build on best practice around the world in terms of how we design an urban and regional mobility authority that can govern mobility as a service, that can govern city services, um, and can integrate a whole range of mo mobility service providers into one um, uh, uh, homogenous or, or integrated system um, 
and also, of course, um, help us to um, manage the efficiency of operations. Um, so this is a, a quick overview um, of, of NEOM's mobility system and our plans for mobility and NEOM as a whole. Perhaps to just finish off, um, as we build out our steady state infrastructure, what would a customer journey look like? Um, you would be arriving and probably pre-book your, your trip to NEOM, um, uh, arrive on NEOM's airline, um, experience a seamless clearance um, uh, at our airport, um, travel with the high-speed system to your uh, next mobility hub and then perhaps take one of our electric sea shuttles um, to one of our beautiful island locations. Um, and similarly, if we look at um, the, the same for freight, um, we would have cargo arriving um, uh, by sea, would have a fully automated um, port process, a reshuffling into our um, uh, uh, high-speed tr uh, freight transit, um, and then further distribution um, along uh, NEOM and um, also to some of the other settlements. We're even looking at next generation uh, hydrogen uh, fuel cells, freight airships to access our remote mountain region, um, and of course, last mile distribution by a number of um, both ground-based and um, uh, air mobility um, uh, devices. So I think this gives you um, a very quick overview of um, NEON and of the vision that we have to become a global living lab for the future of mobility. Thank you very much for your attention, and it's a pleasure to be here.